The world's a scary place filled with many scary people, some of which you don't want to cross paths. Which is why today we're going to look at 8 of the most dangerous prisoners you never want to mess with. First up, John Wayne Gacy, the killer clown. On the surface, John was a successful business owner and family man who was very well liked in his community. However, he had a deep dark attraction to killing people, often described it as the ultimate thrill. John would dress up as a clown to perform at children's hospitals and charitable events, but he would then lure young men to his ranch and trick them into being confined in handcuffs, under the impression that he was going to show them a magic trick. It was there where he would commit heinous acts to his victims, then murder them. In the span of 6 years, he killed at least 33 men. 26 of his victims were found buried in his crawlspace, 4 of them dumped in the river and 3 of them buried somewhere else on his property. However, in 1978, he was finally caught and spent 14 years on death row, not regretting a single thing and his final words were, kiss my ass. Next, Harold Shipman, aka Dr. Death. Harold was a well-liked family doctor with a very disturbing secret. He pretty much had an addiction to murdering his patients. How many you ask? Well, the number is over 250. Harold's method of getting rid of his patients was an overdose injection of diamorphine, which meant you could walk into his office one day and be perfectly fine, and a few days later, you're gone. Now, he went undetected for many years until 1998. That was when a mortuary worker noticed some red flags going up. There happened to be a high number of cremation requests coming from Harold, about 10 times more than the average doctor. So, detectives were called to investigate the situation. And they managed to put two and two together, realizing that this doctor, the person they trusted so much, was the one behind all of these deaths. He was then found guilty of murdering 15 patients and sentenced to life in prison with no chance of release. Next up, H.H. Holmes. Holmes was a notorious con artist who also happened to be one of America's first serial killers. He would go after everyone, men, women, children, and even had his very own murder castle. After all, he needed it for the crimes he was committing. Cause you see, Holmes had a lucrative business that involved the black market. He would sell the organs of his victims and even go as far as selling their bones to medical schools and laboratories. This meant that his castle was fully equipped. He had secret passageways, gas chambers, trap doors, soundproof rooms, a dissecting table, and even a kiln. Uh, yeah. He pretty much used that to incinerate the unwanted body parts of his victims. However, police eventually caught up with him in 1896 and he confessed to 27 murders. He was then convicted and given the death penalty. Up next, Paul John Knowles. Paul was dubbed the Casanova of serial killers because of his good looks and charming personality. However, when he was 19, he had a run-in with the law for kidnapping a police officer. While in prison, he proposed to a woman he had been writing to, and right after he got released, that woman broke up with him, pretty much causing an evil villain to be born. That very same night of his breakup, he went out and killed three people. Paul ended up getting locked up again, but somehow managed to pick the lock of his jail cell and escape. He then went on a murderous rampage, killing men, women, children, the elderly. He was after everyone. However, Paul got captured and ended up admitting to the murders of 35 people. He took the police to the crime scene where he tried to escape again, but this time he was shot dead. Next, Joseph Michael Swangle, the angel of death. Swangle had a fascination with two things, death and poison. Early on, he got an internship job at Ohio's medical facility and for some reason, the patients around him mysteriously started dying. This continued happening until one day a nurse caught him injecting a strange medicine into a patient who later became very ill. They ran a small investigation on Swango but didn't do a thorough enough job. A while later, he was kicked out of that facility, but not because he was caught killing people. It was because of his sloppy performance. Swango then returned to Illinois where he got another job working for an ambulance company. As time went on, his co-workers and everyone around him started getting sick until he was finally caught putting ant poison in their food. Anytime suspicions around him grew, he would leave the city, change his identity, and get a job elsewhere. To the point where America wasn't an option for his murderous practices. 
So he escaped to Africa, and after taking a few lives there and moving from one place to another, he wanted to sink his poison into Saudi Arabia by getting a new job there. And this is where he finally got caught. All thanks to a layover he had in Chicago, because by that time, the FBI was all over him. Up next, Pedro Rodrigo Filho, one of Brazil's most prolific serial killers. Now, this one's a more fascinating case, because this guy would only come after you if you were a criminal or a wrongdoer. He committed his first murder at the age of 14, shooting the deputy mayor of his hometown for firing his father for petty theft. A month later, he killed the guard who was believed to be the real thief in which his father was framed for. And after those murders, Pedro fled to another part of the country where he continued his killing spree going after gang members, drug dealers, and thieves. But it doesn't stop there because a few years later, Pedro's father murders his mother. So he pays his father a visit in jail and stabs him 22 times. Now, in 1973, he was arrested and sentenced to 126 years in prison. However, he continued his rampage behind bars, murdering 47 inmates. A man that only murders bad people. What are your thoughts on this? Next, Grady Franklin Stiles, aka Lobster Boy. Grady had a genetic deformity due to the fusion of his fingers and toes, giving the appearance of claw-like appendages. This also meant that he couldn't walk and was placed in a wheelchair. However, his upper body was extremely strong, and being an alcoholic, he would attack his wife and kids regularly. His method of doing so would be pouncing off his wheelchair and using his two fingers as pincers. He would claw, poke, jab, and headbutt them. Progressively becoming more evil, he took things to another level when he shot and killed his daughter's fiancé on the eve of their wedding. Now, because prisons weren't equipped for his disability, he finessed his jail time and served his sentence at home. And guess what? He got even worse. He continued to make the lives of his wife and kids hell, until one day, they had enough and hired their 17-year-old neighbor to shoot him in the head for $1,500. Next up, Jamie Osuna. Jamie's quite possibly one of the most cold-blooded men on this list. He's had an extremely rough childhood to the point where he murders people just for fun. He has no remorse, no empathy, and has stated many times he would continue to kill over and over again. This guy's so dangerous that he can't even be locked up with other inmates, because the last time he had a cell buddy, Jamie ended up taking off his head, dissecting his body, and wearing his organs as ornaments. Now, Jamie's story gets much deeper than that and it'll take too long for me to explain right now. So make sure to subscribe with the bell notifications on because in a few weeks, I'm gonna make a separate video on Jamie Osuna and his disturbing case and you don't wanna miss that. Anyway, smash the like button and I'll see you guys next Saturday.